I do a remote meeting. The June 1st, 2015 regularly scheduled meeting of Robertson County School Board will now come to order. Please silence all cell phones and electronic devices and join me in a moment of silence. Thank you. Would you please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance? Attention, salute, pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Davis, would you please read our mission and vision statements? Students and their achievement must be the focus of our every meeting, our every plan, our every decision. The mission and vision statements of the Robertson County School System are the expressions of what we believe and what we expect. We believe our mission is to ensure each student is prepared to succeed in life. Our vision is that Robertson County Schools will enable all students to reach and exceed high academic and career standards while empowering them to succeed in a technologically advanced and culturally diverse society. Thank you. Uh, you have before you board members a consent agenda for tonight. What is your pleasure? Move to approve the consent agenda. We have a motion by Mr. Crockett. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. White. Discussion? All those in favor, make it known by saying aye. Aye. Uh, opposed, no. Motion passes. Not sure about Mr. Converse. Should be able to hear. Maybe if he votes no, I'll hear him. You'll hear him. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, we have no recognition of student and teacher achievements tonight, so we'll move on to our RCEA representative, Ms. Nikki Fields. Well, I finally have something for y'all tonight. So, you should have gotten, Miss Beverly was going to make you a copy of what we worked on today, which is what we hope is a completed memorandum of understanding. It's in the Dropbox. Oh, it's in your oh, Dropbox. Okay. Like, okay. We did leave one page out, and I'm going to pass that around to you <laughs> if you want to take a copy that. I think that's probably one of the pages you'll be most interested in. Um, what we agreed on were 31 articles. Most of those were from the uh, either edited or um, kept as is from the uh, old contract. We did add one new article and we deleted the things that were no longer um, relevant based on um, the law. Uh, it, it has some things we can't include any longer. Um, I did want to point out a couple of things. In Article 9, that's the one that deals with money. <laughs> so um, we did um, include um, some academic supplements there that were already being paid out but weren't um, structured in the old article. If you remember how it looked, this looks a little bit different. Um, so we uh, pulled some things in from an old memorandum of understanding that dealt with money that goes to the principals to divide out between the academic leaders. It was already there. We just moved it in with the rest of the supplement items. We also um, consolidated and made some additions to some of the athletic <coughs> Um, we didn't actually increase any of the athletic stipends, but we did add some additional assistant coaches positions that um, after polling our coaches that are currently in the school, they said that they would rather have additional manpower than more money. So um, this will allow us to hopefully have some additional coaches. Um, Changes to the insurance clause are there. These are the things that were discussed and improved, uh, approved by the insurance committee, and it aligns with what we're currently doing 
Um, so it wasn't anything major, it just basically was making it line up with what we're currently doing. You also have our proposed salary schedule in front of you. Um, there are some improvements um, at the at every step, about a 2% increase is what um, it averaged out to be. One thing that we would like to try to do, if you look down at the bottom, is um, what's called collapsing the salary schedule, where people will reach um, the maximum salary sooner. So if you look at that, instead of reaching maximum salary at 30 years, on this new salary schedule, you would reach the maximum um, salary at 28 years. So um, we think that that will help overall lifetime earnings and it'll also help um, folks toward their retirement as well. Something else that's different about that salary schedule is we've taken out what we call a lane, which is the long columns. Um, we had in the old salary schedule a column for plus 30. Now anybody who currently has what we call plus 30, which would be an additional master's degree or 30 hours of coursework that has not culminated in a degree, those folks will continue to get their salary at that plus 30 lane. We've got about 40 people in the district who are receiving a plus 30 um, that are on that step of this, of the, or in that lane. Um, what we're hoping by getting rid of that lane is that it will encourage folks to get the EDS or the EDD or PhD rather than just doing 30 hours of additional coursework. So, um, that's there. The article that was added was a uh, number, let me look, the end, 21. Um, talking with Ms. Simmons, um, we've had a lot of confusion, I think, over um, what is a complaint and what is actually an issue that can be handled by a principal. Um, so we tried to clarify that. There's a fair treatment, uh, the article right in front of this is on fair treatment, then we have this one on educator conduct and disciplinary procedures, and then right after that we have external complaints. When we look at complaints, usually those complaints are things that are coming from uh, not between a teacher and a teacher or not a principal having a complaint about job performance. This is an external complaint coming from outside the school um, from a parent or a, a community member. So that's going to be dealt with a little differently than things that we consider to be job performance issues that will be handled um, by the principal. And if you look in there, it also, you know, is very clear on the fact that this doesn't violate anything that's in Tennessee code or, or you know, a teacher's right to due process or um, the dismissal policy in, um, in state law. So those are about the major changes. Um, there are some wording changes. We got rid of some things that we thought were obsolete. There was one um, clause that required uh, this, a telephone to be provided for the association president for me to have access to a telephone at school. Um, I got a cell phone, so I think I'm covered. Uh, we thought there was also a provision that required you to provide a chalkboard for every teacher, so uh, we, we thought that was obsolete. We, we deleted that. So there were some things, you know, we, we cleaned up the wording, and um, I hope you'll look over this. We're not expecting you to take action on this tonight, obviously. I know you just got it. We're hoping that um, maybe we can take action on this at the July board meeting. So if you have questions, um, Ms. Hogan served on the team, Ms. Simmons served on the team, and then we um, had some additional administrators and uh, our CEA members who um, represented everybody on the team. I Actually, you are the first people to see this. This is, it just got finished about 4.30 today, so it has not been com communicated to the teachers at all yet. I had time to go home and come right back here, so I've not even emailed them to tell them that we are finished. So, um, first look, but if you have questions and uh, you want to talk to me or to Ms. Hogan or Ms. Simmons, we'll be happy. Ms. Ms. Clowder was also on the team, so she can answer the money questions better than I can. So, that's all I have. Hope that's plenty of reading material for you guys, and I appreciate everything that you all have done to support us throughout this um, process. Thanks. Nobody has a question for us. Yes, we have a lot of reading today. That's good. Okay, we'll move on then to our personnel report.
Madam Chairman, members of the board, the personnel report is in your packet. Uh, it reflects that we had 78 certified staff personnel actions during the past month, and they include uh, leave of absence for one, resignations for 32, retirement for one, transfers for 38, and new hires for six. Uh, for the classified employees, we had 59 personnel actions, uh, three of which were leave of absence, 10 resignations, 10 retirements, and five non-renewals, and 22 transfers, and nine new hires. Subject to your questions, that completes my report. Any questions for Mr. Davis on that? Okay, next on the agenda, we have an approval to abolish a couple of positions. Administrative Assistant for Transportation Department and Bransford Elementary School Bookkeeper. Would you like to? Uh, yes, ma'am. We are asking the board to abolish these positions. Uh, we no longer need a bookkeeper at Bransford Elementary School. Uh, that position will go away, be dissolved. Uh, I talked to Mr. Uh, Partlow, and uh, we're asking that you abolish the position of administrative assistant at the transportation department. Uh, he needs a transportation department coordinator, router, GPS coordinator, router, more than he needs anything else right now. And so that's so why he's giving up a position and getting a position. That's what it looks like. Okay. That's what we have to do. Uh, Yes. Okay. Uh, I'm concerned about that. I'm concerned about the buses rolling on day on, on August the fourth morning. I'm concerned about Crestview being complete at this point. We don't have bus routes ready, and uh, I've asked James tonight if you'd like some further explanations to how this software works. He has been to some training on it, and he understands how complicated this can be. <coughs> and this involves more than Crestview. This involves uh, Crestview. It involves Cheatham Park, West Side. <coughs> Greenbrier, Cooperstown, all of those schools, and it's going to be a, a it's going to be a huge, huge undertaking for us to accomplish. Would you agree? Yes, sir. I'd be glad to. Well, we're jumping a little bit ahead. Yeah, well, we, need to, we need to we need to approve those take positions on first. <laughs> approve, approve. Okay. I'm asking you to approve that tonight. Okay. So you've heard the recommendation to uh, abolish those two positions. What's your pleasure? Motion moved. Kind of recommendation, Mr. Bates. Is there a second? Second. Okay, motions made by Mr. Hurd and seconded by Mr. White. Any other discussion or questions? Is, you, is your motion for one and two or yes. one at this point? One and two? Okay. Both of them. Yes. Yes. Okay. All those in favor, make it known by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. Motion passes. Okay, now we can go to the approval to the new position, if you want. Okay. You no, we just took care of that. He, he didn't, he didn't his motion was oh, well, I'm so sorry. I thought we were abolishing that was, the No, that was one and two. That was my question to him was, was this to take care of point one, one and two? I am so sorry then. To abolish and create. Okay. Yes. But I thought we were going to let Mr. Marshall talk on that position. <laughs> you don't have you to. skipped right over him. He can, tell what, he's got. He can tell what this new position is going to do if he wants to. Yeah. I'll be happy to. I'll make it quick. I know you'll be. I, I was really going to lobby for this tonight because I've been very involved in the bus planner program. Get the mic so we can do it. The program itself. Um, it's wonderful, but it's only as good as the data you get in it. And Mr. Parlow has struggled with that. His his people have been driving buses. They've been doing everything but focusing on bus planner. Quite honestly, they are not prepared. So we did some training, uh, refresh training for my people and his people so that we could support them. But uh, there's a lot of buses, times, routes, stops, all that has to be entered. The idea being that this fall, a parent can log on to the website and say, I live at this address, and they come back and tell you what school you go to and roughly what time that bus comes by your home. That's our goal. To be able to do that, it's going to take some real heads down the rest of the summer um, entry. And I'm not so certain that can all be done in the time that we have allotted. So um, this is a lot more than just a GIS coordinator. That's just a piece of the puzzle. The big piece here. As I explained to Mr. Davis, I think it make us money in that with them, with someone full-time on data in transportation, they can comb the student records, make sure they're right, be sure our children that are riding buses are on those buses, 
that their distance is correct, and that all transmits to the ADT report, which then ultimately you're paying for your buses. So I think all in all, it's worth it to you in a lot of different ways. Okay. Good enough? Thank you. Um, may I say one other thing about your previous motion? Yes, you may. Uh, I see that, that that is the elementary school bookkeeper. This is none of my business, but I do know that happens to be Jane Lehman, okay. a very long time employee of the county, and I hope you'll handle that in a, in a, in a good way. Okay, we will move on to our expense comparison report. Madam Chairman, members of the board, your report as of April 30th is in your packet. It shows that we are at 88% uh, collection of revenues for this year, and we are at 76.54% at expenditures. We are just a little bit better on revenues than we were this time last year, by about 1% percentage point, and we are about one percentage point under expenditures, so that looks pretty good at this point. Uh, property taxes, of course, have exceeded expectations, and they're at 103.16%. Sales tax at 77.76% uh, as of April 30th. The electricity, diesel, gasoline, and insurance is there for you. We are uh, a little more on electricity this, this year than we were at this time last year. We're at 88 versus 84. We are under on diesel fuel. We have 71% spent this year as opposed to 84 last year. Uh, gasoline, we were a little bit over, over, and that was because of the way the budget was put together the previous year. Uh, we had to do an amendment to make it balanced, but it's 100, 109% versus 894 at this time last year. Uh, insurance, uh, we are 86.59% as compared to 74.65% last year. Subject to your questions, I can place the report on the uh, expenditures and receipts. Okay, any questions? Okay, we will move next to the approval of the general fund budget amendment. <coughs> Madam Chairman, members of the board, I'm scheduled to present a budget request to the county commission, I believe it's June the 18th. Uh, I need for you to approve a budget proposal, and that's what you have before you this evening. Uh, this will not be the last time I'm sure that you'll see this budget, but I think the consensus we had from our work session <coughs> on the budget is the board felt that we needed to ask for what we really needed, and then if there's something we have to come back and cut, we'll have to do that. But we, are, are, uh, we need to back up. We're on the general fund budget amendment. I'm sorry. Okay, I'll skip. You wanted to get that budget passed, didn't you? Oh, oh, I'm <laughs> He's sorry. anxious here. I'm sorry. I, I just skipped over one. Uh, the general purpose uh, uh, budget amendment is to balance the line items within the budget. Uh, this should be the last one, Sheila, we'll have this year for FY15, this year 15. So uh, this takes the big portion of this is coming from health insurance, which uh, the finance department has said they need to take uh, an additional payment this year out of the budget. In other words, we have 13 payments in this fiscal year as opposed to 12, and that's the bulk of this amendment, and that's why we're asking you to pass that to see. Okay, heard that request. What's your pleasure? Okay, we'll move on to Motion to approve. Thank you, Mr. White. Is there a second? Second. Second, Mr. Payne. Any questions or discussion? All those in favor of the approval of the general fund budget amendment, you make it known by saying aye. 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 Opposed, no. The motion passes. Now you can go to your budget request. Okay. <laughs> Did I just what I said earlier? <laughs> We need to approve a budget request to be presented to the county commission uh, on June the 18th. We will need to have, after I present that, I think, Madam Chairman, you will need to call a work session uh, to make whatever adjustments we have to make in the budget. I gave you a schedule, I think, at our work session, and we're supposed to have this totally completed by July. Uh, and I have to know the date, but it's July 17th or something like that. So I would recommend that you approve the budget request that we have put together. Heard that request. Move that we approve the 2015-2016 budget request as submitted. Okay. Thank you. 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 Th
motion has been made by Mr. Crockett. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Cunningham. Any questions or discussion? <coughs> has there been much done with it since our meeting the other night? <coughs> we, not a lot. Sheila and I have worked on it, but uh, adjusting a few salaries. Uh, we have the 2% plus the step increase, which equates to approximately 3% increase for our teachers. There are no increases in there for other folks at this time. And that's something that troubles me just a, a little bit that we might want to come back and look at that when we have a, another work session, depending on how this goes. But we're, I think that's as low as we can go as far as the salary adjustments for teachers. I still stick with what this feels passed out earlier, trying to keep us above the uh, <coughs> Jeeman County. And uh, I think they've done a good job with that. I think uh, Ms. Fields told me this afternoon they're about $200 on base salary above Chief County if we we're able to fund this budget. That's not much. We should be comparable to those folks. You have any questions? How much more money was it going to take to fund the raise for all of the other employees? We haven't calculated that yet. Uh, we've worked primarily with the monies that were allocated to the BEP. Um, that's something that, again, troubles me that we need to look at. And that's something the board would need to tell me that they would like to, me to go ahead and do. We can calculate 2% for all of the employees and come back with that number. We haven't done that yet. Uh, just, I don't know you haven't done it, Sheila. I, I, I certainly haven't done it. So uh, we had such a large number that we were kind of afraid to put that one on top of it right now. We may have to do that. We might not need to do that. Some of our salaries, and kind of Terry's here, we looked at that. Some of our salaries are even exceed you know, some of our adjoining counties as far as classified personnel go. But some of them are lacking. So we really need to have, we've been, we've been talking about this for quite some time with Terry and Sheila and myself and Dr. Cash before she left, trying to get us on a cross the board salary schedule where all the positions, if you're an administrative assistant, you get the same as every other administrative assistant. And in the past, when I looked at the uh, central office uh, salary structure when I came here, they were all over the map. One was making this amount, and one was making that amount, and the other one was making the third amount. And that's not a fair and equitable way to do a salary schedule. So we're going to look at that in a little more detail. I know Terry's been working on that for me and come back with a, with a recommendation.